Okay, we're gonna talk about is fatty liver a big deal? Fatty liver has become super common. So what causes fatty liver? Excessive dietary fat, that's the main cause of it. Eating meat and processed foods, that leads to insulin resistance. The higher fat in the diet, the more insulin resistance people tend to have. Insulin resistance eventually leads to hyperglycemia when the pancreas can no longer produce enough insulin to overcome the resistance. The excessive glucose then goes to the liver from the hyperglycemia and the liver converts some of it to fat. More fat is made in the liver than was done so previously. Um, the dietary fat then has an effect upon the liver whereby it, become, it loses its sensitivity to insulin. We'll go into more of the physiology in just a moment. The other thing that causes um, fatty liver is excessive dietary simple sugars, especially these uh, beverages that are sweetened with high fructose corn syrup because there's no fiber to slow down the absorption of it and you get this rapid bolus of fructose. Fructose is processed totally different than is glucose. Glucose goes to the entire body and it's what we're made to run on. Our brain wants glucose. Fructose, however, is processed primarily in the liver and it enters glycolysis um, after the regulatory steps. So it bypasses regulation and you get this giant bolus of fructose from these high fructose corn syrup sweetened beverages and the liver just has nothing to do with it and makes almost all of it into fat. And then the liver starts releasing fat into the blood. It's not good. Um, alcohol will also cause a fatty liver. Now fatty liver is so common that if a radiologist sees a requisition that says elevated LFTs, liver function tests, it's a safe bet about 95% or more that that patient's gonna have a fatty liver, probably more than 95% in my experience. Um, it's also routine to see fatty liver in just random patients. Um, patient comes in for whatever it might be, kidney stone, there's a fatty liver. Some other abdominal pain, there's a fatty liver. Um, we're looking at an ultrasound for a kidney. Kidney failure, there's a fatty liver on the ultrasound. You just see fatty liver all the time. It is so common and the reason is so many people eat a high fat diet. Standard American diet is about 45% fat. William C. Roberts, MD, the cardiac pathologist, he said it. When you feed a herbivore a high fat diet, they all get atherosclerosis, 100% of them. And fatty liver goes with the whole atherosclerosis, insulin resistance syndrome, metabolic syndrome, etc. The liver can be enlarged by this accumulation of fat and it'll stretch the liver capsule. And it's like saran wrap around the liver and that can cause chronic right upper quadrant discomfort. That's another real common reason, chronic right upper quadrant discomfort for patients getting an ultrasound of their liver. Okay, so here's a diagram of what's happening with uh, fatty liver. And so by the way, fatty liver is a big deal because it really means prediabetes or diabetes and it means insulin resistance syndrome almost always and it means the patient's much sicker than they realize. So. The whole cascade of events starts out with increased dietary fat or increased dietary fructose or alcohol, which essentially get made into fat. And then the liver, the, excuse me, the skeletal muscle, here's like a biceps muscle, starts to accumulate um, fat. And fat gets into the skeletal muscle faster than does the glucose, because the glucose is dependent on glucose type 4 transporters. Once the fat's inside the cell, the cell in a sense senses overnutrition and it gets into the mitochondria and it causes the mitochondrial gradient to rise so rapidly. There's an excessive amount of electron carriers that the gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane goes too high above a threshold potential and it starts to reverse direction. The best paper ever written on this subject was written by Michael Bromley called Unifying Theory of Diabetes Complications. It was the Banting Award uh, Prize lecture for 2004 you can find it on the American Diabetic Association website. It's a great paper. It's a genius level paper. Um, and anyways, reversal of electron transport in the mitochondria leading to like a traffic jam, a backup of Krebs cycle, a backup of glycolysis. Uh, and then the cell sensing overnutrition blocks the passage of the glucose type 4 transporters to go up to the plasma cell membrane and that prevents any glucose from coming into the skeletal muscle cell. Normally after eating a meal, it's called postprandial, 80% uh, of the glucose should be stored in the muscle like as glycogen. But when the glucose can't get into the muscle, first of all the pancreas tries to compensate by producing more and more insulin. It's very easy for the insulin levels to double um, in this uh, setting of insulin resistance.
and that will try to sort of force the glucose into the skeletal muscle cells. Uh, but eventually the pancreas can't compensate so well and the insulin resistance gets worse and you'll have hyperglycemia in the blood, high blood glucose levels. And then there's other cells that are not dependent on the glucose type transporters like endothelial cells, for example, retinal cells, kidney cells, and they will be damaged themselves by the hyperglycemia. Um, but first of all, getting back to our fatty liver, when the blood glucose levels start going up, more and more glucose, instead of going to the skeletal muscles, it goes to the liver. The liver doesn't have anything to do with it immediately, so it just stores it as fat. Um, then the liver also starts to release more uh, lipid, more fat into the blood, which is atherogenic. Um, the best guy who figured out a lot of this stuff is a guy by the name of Dr. Gerald Sheldman, MD, PhD. Um, and he did a lot of work at Yale with nu nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy to look inside the cells. And, you know, he confirmed the same thing that's actually been known since the 1920s. It is fat that initiates insulin resistance. That's an important statement because very few people are aware of the fact that diabetes is a lipid disease. It is not primarily a carbohydrate disease. It results in high blood glucose levels, hyperglycemia, and everybody knows that, sugar diabetes, sugar in the urine, etc. But it's caused initially by excessive dietary fat, fructose, or um, alcohol. Well, dietary fat and fructose is our main point. Okay, so subsequently you get a fatty liver and then once the liver sort of getting beyond its capacities to adequately store the fat you have more and more fat being taken up by the pancreas and that's really bad because the fat causes insulin resistance in the skeletal muscle we spoke about that the fat then causes insulin resistance in the liver by the way insulin resistance in the skeletal muscle leads to postprandial after eating hyperglycemia and then once the liver becomes insulin resistance then you get fasting hyperglycemia so your blood glucose is high all around the clock you know all 24 hours um, in the pancreas something different happens when there is increased fat uptake by the pancreas beta cells the pancreas beta cells are the ones that make insulin they are damaged by excessive fat uptake and then they fail they die the pancreatic beta cells die and that's really bad because the patient loses their ability to make insulin and they can't replace that and we can see this on a CAT scan. You just look at the pancreas, you'll see all this fatty atrophy. Super common thing to see. And so now you're going to have progressively worsening hyperglycemia because this glucose can't get into skeletal, skeletal muscle after eating and because the liver can't shut off its gluconeogenesis because it's lost its insulin sensitivity. So these arrows drawn here show what happens. The eye cells have the inability to regulate blood glucose uptake, so they're overwhelmed by it. You get a diabetic retinopathy. Um, diabetes is associated with hypertension for multiple reasons. We won't go into that now, but they're hypertensive, which causes atherosclerosis throughout the body. They have a very high incidence of myocardial infarction, and diabetes damages endothelial cells, the arterial lining cells all over the body. So they have a very high incidence of dying of myocardial infarction. There's a lot of very delicate, sensitive cells in the kidney that, again, cannot regulate their glucose uptake. So when there's hyperglycemia, they're overwhelmed by the high amounts of glucose, and these can induce mitochondrial failure. And so they have a very high rate of going into kidney failure. Diabetes and hypertension are two most common causes of kidney failure, and these patients will typically have both. Uh, they routinely are impotent. They have severe, you know, total systemic atherosclerosis. Very commonly, they get their foots amputated. Not a day goes by that multiple patients don't get their feet amputated in any big hospital in the United States because of diabetes. It's that common. So anyways, that's, that's the key thing to recognize. These are sort of, I consider them the stages of diabetes. That's not an official thing, but from reading a lot of papers about it, it makes sense. Excess fat in the skeletal muscle, leading to excess fat in the liver, leading to excess fat in the pancreas, leading to hyperglycemic damage all over the body and in these arteries, small arteries of the foot get a microvasculopathy and it's a disaster because if you have a proximal arterial blockage like an iliac artery from smoking, you can bypass around that. You can't bypass past a little tiny artery in the foot. There's nothing to bypass too. So they just get tons of amputations, these diabetics. And then what I mean by cognitive impairment is you talk to them and you say, you know, you might want to consider improving your diet. And they're like, oh, at my age, what are you going to do? They have no sense of how sick they are, just fading into oblivion. Okay, um, is fatty liver a big deal? Like we said, humans are designed to be herbivores, and you feed them a herbivore-type diet of carbohydrates, they do really well. When you feed them a high-fat diet, in a sense, the liver becomes confused. You know, all throughout our biologic history, 
um, except for the last hundred years when fat becomes so widely available, to have high blood lipids meant starvation. And when there's starvation, the liver's you know, job is to make sure the brain gets enough gluco blood glucose, so it wants to prioritize the blood glucose so that it goes to the brain cells. Also, red blood cells, for example, they don't have mitochondria. They need to run on glucose. So diabetes is a physiologic ad adaptation in the setting of hyperlipidemia, has a good reason to occur because it's done to maintain blood glucose to the brain during starvation, okay? You know, these excessive fat foods did not exist when these uh, mechanisms were developed, so to speak. Okay, after a normal meal of starches, like we talked about, 80% of glucose goes to the skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle can store it as glycogen for its own use. Some of the glucose is taken up by the liver to make glycogen, but that glycogen is for a different purpose. It is to maintain blood glucose levels between meals so that the brain always has what it needs. The brain is the most important thing in the human body. Okay, fat we talked about it gets into skeletal muscle faster than the glucose can. Fat causes insulin resistance in skeletal muscle, leading to the sequence of events we just talked about. Um, it is fat that causes insulin resistance both in the skeletal muscle and in the liver. And these are progressive uh, phases in prediabetes and diabetes and basically destruction of the patient's health and their metabolic system. So fatty liver, I think of it as essentially being prediabetes or diabetes of the liver. It's a big deal. And the good news is it's easy to cure it most of the time. Just stop eating so much fat. You know, eat a low-fat, low-sodium, whole food, 100% organic, vegan diet, and exercise more. Also, avoid estrogenic chemicals. They contribute to obesity. Uh, fatty liver is not only a big deal in the sense that it's an indicator of prediabetes or diabetes. It also can progress to cirrhosis, and lots of patients are going on to liver cancer or liver transplant due to liver failure from excessive dietary fat and fatty liver. So that covers it. Fatty liver is a big deal, super common. So if you got it, try to fix it on your own by improving your diet. Um, and you can reverse it. You catch it early, it's totally reversible.